So, we will discuss the laparoscopic management of the genito urinary prolapse, how to deal with. As we know that symptom of the prolapse is feeling of pelvic heaviness, fullness, low back pain, perception of lump, mucosal erosion. If it is present for long time, it can create many problem like the urinary tract infection, chronic bladder retention, bladder instability, dilatation of the upper urinary tract, renal insufficiency, these all problems can happen. Now, in those situation, anatomy of levator ani is important as we have discussed before that is both in dock analogy. The levator ani muscle makes the main platform over which all the organs of the pelvis is resting upon and you have the different type like uh, pivo urethral ligament, pivo caucasial ligament, ilio caucasial ligament, uterocycle ligaments, transverse ligament, these all are supporting tendinous arc of levator ani muscle and basically when there is a weakness in those ligaments, then there is a prolapse. We have already discussed that there are different type of prolapse like cystocele, hysterocele, rectocele, interocele, hysterocele, elytrocele and different grading that is grade 0, grade 1 and grade 2. Sometime grade 3 where it is outside the intraatus. In all those situations, basically a urodynamic study is required in which the lower border of pubic symphysis has to be seen with the your uh, this uh, um, um, coccyx and uh, a line has to be drawn and if any line crossing down that means it is a prolapse. MRI or colpocytogram can be used. To uh, start the surgery you have to keep the patient 30 degree head down and it should be in such a way that surgeon will stand on the left, one assistant on the other side, monitor should be either 2 or 1 and then you will start the procedure with the four ports technique. We have uh, to use the mesh and mesh has to be fixed depending upon the type of prolapse and you have to fix it dual processes that is two meshes has to be used and ultimately it will be fixed with the sacral pomentary. So, anterior longitudinal ligament which already you might have seen during the dissection that is the main point to fix it either with the tacker or with the suture. If the uterus is already out then you have to use a dissection with the ribbon retractor and then you need to close the peritoneum. Laparoscopic uterine suspension already we have seen that how to do. So, this I will not discuss now today we are going to discuss the wall prolapse and first how to do if it is a hysterocele, cystocele and rectocele together. This is uterus and here is the sacral pomentary, this is ureter and the right side you have the sigmoid colon, then this is fallopian tube, round ligament, ovary and ligament, ovary and after that you will put a uh, uterine manipulator and push the uterus down. Now, what is this? This is cervix, here this is uterus and this is vagina and this is bladder. So, what you have to do that you should take one grasper, lift the uv fold peritoneum up and you will open the anterior peritoneum all around. So, that you can make a window that is called as para cervical window. A window has to be made either side. Do you know this patient has a hysterocele with the mild cystocele Hmm. This is a um, anterior peritoneum and you will cut it. Our purpose is to put a paracervical window just like how we put a tie in the neck and if someone will pull this tie, we will be pulled away together. There is no chance to escape because it is a knot. Exactly same way the idea is that suppose this is a cervix, we will go with the mesh and we will tie the mesh encircling the cervix. Just like how you do the cervical circlage, same way, but it will go from below, so that it will uh, pull the entire cervix up. And what will be the benefit? That once the cervix will be pulled, together with the bladder also get pulled. And you have to separate the bladder, and you, you need to put a mesh anteriorly. Just I will like to show you little bit about how to do with one simple diagram that uh, suppose <coughs> sorry this is a uterus and here is a cervix 
and there is a bladder. So, first thing what you will do that you will separate the bladder and open the anterior leaf of the broad ligament with the UV fold and you will separate the bladder. So, once you separate the bladder, bladder will go up and bladder will go there here and here now there will be vagina, this will be the vaginal fascia. Now, what you have to do? You have to bring a paracervical window, one window here, other window and after that you take a mess and that mess you will make a Y shaped mess mesh will be like that, it will be Y shaped mesh and uh, mesh once you have suppose this is a mesh, then you will cut the mesh in the middle and you will make it Y shaped, this is a Y shaped mesh, you will split the mesh like that. After that what you will do that this Y limb, one this limb, this limb, you will bring it from this hole this Y limb you will bring it from this hole just like how you put a necktie and then you tie this mesh together. So, the proximal end of the mesh will be tightened together and distal end of the mesh you will fix with the vaginal fascia and then close the peritoneum. Once you close the peritoneum, the peritoneum which you have opened you will close it. Once you close it then bladder again will fall over this mesh and after that posterior wall of the bladder will make fibrosis with the mesh. What is cystocele? Cystocele is a herniation of the anterior vagina through which posterior wall of the bladder also descend. So, that will be cured and uh, now this long limb what you will do just like this, this is a Y limb which is going either side and this long limb what you will do, you will fold it and after folding it you will fix it with the uterocycle ligament just like hysteropexy and then there will be a loop and this loop you will fix with the sacral permanent. So, that will cure the multiple prolapse also like if it is a mild cystocil, hysterocil and little rectocil all will be cured. This is called as dual processes sacrocolpopexy and in this technique you have not to remove the uterus and one of the big advantages in this technique that the patient will be able to deliver they do not have to sacrifice the uterus only thing is that Syrian section is required. So, what right now you are seeing is that is the opening of the anterior leaf of the broad ligament and that you have to do starting from the UV fold and going right now uterus is retroverted and the four ports are used three ports are according to baseball diamond concept and one port which is suprapubic is using the sutures and this way you will open the entire UV fold and uh, a uh, separation of the bladder also will be done. With the help of the seizures, you can push the this uh, entire uh, bladder up and that way slowly slowly it will be separated. This sacrocolpopexy is a very useful procedure especially for the patient who has a prolapse. Generally the other procedure which is done vaginally like plication of the uterocycle ligament or other procedures, they do not have a very long term benefit, but it is good. Now, the bladder is separated and what you are seeing is here the vagina is started appearing. So, it is nicely separated and this is vagina here you can see this is cervix and this is vaginal tissue started appearing and it is open. After that what you do? You make a paracervical window. If you see that there is a window which will be made and by just a small nick on the posterior uh, peritoneum and a window is formed here. This is a small window, this is on the right side and the same window you will make on the left side and this is a small window which is made on the left side. Just blunt dissection, any artery, any ureter will not come because you are only dealing with the peritoneum. This is a also peritoneal surgery just like the birth suspension which you have done and hysteropexy these all are peritoneal surgery nothing except peritoneum has to be dissected and all the dissection which is used to separate the bladder and the other fascia is blunt dissection, sharp dissection is not required in this surgery. So, now a window is made on either side and it is over now. Can you see what is this? this is the window, do you see that and this is uterus, this is ovary and what is this? Uterosacral ligament. So, this is done at the level of internal loss that 
yes yes in between the uh, cervix either side in between the internal loss and uh, cervical uh, vaginal junction. So, at that level you have to do. So, now this is a window which is made here and one window is made here and entire anterior leaf of the broad ligament is cut and bladder is separated that is all has been done right now. Now, what you have to do you have to separate the posterior vaginal peritoneum that is posterior caldi sac do you know why because you have to put a mesh here also. So, that fibrosis will develop with the posterior vaginal wall and then there will be no any rectocil. So, this can you see this win window this is a window and this is a window and now you open the peritoneum of the posterior caldi sac and you should take care that only peritoneum should be separated only peritoneum should be separated no rectum should be touched and no any other, other tissue will be taken means dissected. You should also take care that accidentally there should not be any colpotomy and colpotomy is not possible because you are not pushing anything in the vagina. So, vagina is loose here and it is concave it is not getting under tension. So, just you have to separate the peritoneum of the posterior caldi sac. If there is little oozing you can use the bipolar and you can separate it nicely and the purpose is that we have to put a portion of the mesh has to be put in between the peritoneum and that is over that is done. After that what you will do that you will start cutting the what is this sacral pulmonary and you will start cutting the peritoneum of sacral pulmonary from right side of the rectum and you reach up to the caldi sac it is just like it is just like hysterocil as you remember just like hysterocil you will start cutting peritoneum and only peritoneum only peritoneum how to cut the peritoneum safely that you will pull it and then cut it purpose of making this peritoneal that we can hide our mess into this peritoneum and then we can suture it by the continuous suturing. So, this is the peritoneum which is cut up to the uterocycle ligament. So, throughout the surgery if you see very carefully anything except peritoneum is not cut anything except peritoneum is not cut and all blunt dissection. So, our purpose is to push away all the tissue which is near the peritoneum and then gas will also help you and then you will reach up to the uterosacral ligament here it is rich and rectum will not be touched and always from the right side ureter will be left, but once you will pulling the peritoneum stretching it then there is no chances of any ureteric injury. Now, this is the anterior longitudinal ligament this is pearly white in color and if you will push it you can easily recognize because it will give you tactile feedback also with the tip of the instrument you can feel it and here this is anterior longitudinal ligament this is pearly white in color and now surgery is over dissection part is complete. Now, there is no more dissection now you have to put a mess and start suturing. So, how to do? <coughs> it, it will not start bleeding if you are at correct plane. If you will go to the mid line and if suppose because aorta is here aorta and aortoiliac axis is much down it will not the only thing what it can start bleeding here is the median sacral vessel and if median sacral vessel is bleeding then you have to coagulate it with the bipolar. There is no any harm if you are coagulating it, but of course better is not to go to any and if you will go more lateral so, here is the ureter going if you go more lateral then you can go to the iliac vessels. So, of course, you have to be very careful and it is it is a very good landmark sacral pulmonary and if you touch it then automatically it can give you bony feeling. So, that is the place where you have to separate and this is external iliac vessel if it is injured then it is a big problem that is why we say it triangle of doom that is why you need to get a help of the vascular surgeon because you need a first vascular clamp and then you have to suture that conversion is better immediately convert give the pressure pressure and after that you can clip the vascular clamp can be applied and then it can be repaired. So, if you do not have the experience of dealing with the because sometime during suture if you take a bite you can 
injure it more and iliac vessel is not a vessel which you can clip or you can ligate in mass because it is supplying the lower limb is not it. So, you have to close the puncture side and puncture side closure is not very easy because you will take a prick it will bleed more and the blood will not allow you to see the puncture. So, immediate conversion is required although many people who have the good vascular surgeon has a experience of doing laparoscopy then they can repair also. So, now this is the sacral pulmonary and anterior longitudinal ligament which is now this is a mesh, mesh is 30 centimeter long and 3 centimeter in the width and you will cut the uh, split the mesh in the center. So, it is making like a tie just like the tie of a child where the knot is already there and they put it around and then you put the mesh inside this is a y shaped mesh which will go inside and after that can you see these two holes these are the holes now through these holes this mesh will go. So, right now it is posterior, but y limb has to go anterior. So, you can see through this hole which you have made it and this is coming up can you see that here it goes this is one y limb and this is other y limb is it clear it is encircling it. So, it goes like that it goes this way suppose this is cervix then mesh is going like this and long limb is still loose lying there long limb is not touched long limb is lying there and after that what you do you suture both the mesh together both the mesh which is there you will suture the mesh together. So, that mesh is making tight around the cervix mesh is making a tight around the cervix. So, this is the one bite taken with the mesh little peritoneum also you can take include in your and then this is the other bite taken on this side and then you will pull it and then you will tie a knot. Once you will tie a knot it will be make a very tight uh, and this is extra corporeal knot with the Clark knot pusher this is a square knot you are getting it yes, sir. there is no any confusion into this. So, here it is do you know uh, during your next dissection what you can do how you can simulate it in the bladder you make a window either side and you encircle from below and tie it over the urethra you got my point and the tip of the y limb this is this is both the mesh is sutured together both the mesh is sutured together and now it will not allow if you will pull the y limb it will pull the uterus also up and then the tip of this y limb is sutured with the vaginal fascia this is the vaginal fascia and the, this is a ultra lightweight mesh and pure polypropylene and or polyester mesh you do not have to use any expensive mesh here and this is sutured here the tip of the y limb is sutured with the vagina. So, this mesh is sitting anterior to the cervix and over the anterior vaginal valve is it clear it is sitting over the anterior vaginal valve and yes that is that is true that is suture and now it is fixed. So, only problem of that once the you will close what is this peritoneum and once anterior peritoneum can you see that and once you suture it bladder will fall over the mesh right now uterus is extroverted, but once uterus will come bladder will fall and fibrosis will develop with the posterior wall of bladder and then bladder cannot herniate cannot descend this is one, but only problem is that it will make a tight fibrosis around the cervix. So, cervix can no more dilate at a time of delivery in the pregnancy. So, only thing is possible is cesarean section without cesarean and that also many people they prefer classical cesarean section and then you can suture it and after that you will close the peritoneum. So, this is how you have to fix it and then it is cut and now close the peritoneum all the peritoneum which you have opened now you have to close it. So, that is why we say this surgery is a closure of peritoneum opening of peritoneum and closure of peritoneum. So, this is peritoneum which is closed here this gynecologist is using here the extra corporeal knot for closure of the peritoneum also. So, that is a good idea it is not bad extra corporeal you can use dandy jamming knot continuous suturing and Aberdeen termination also and extra corporeal if you are using it only care has to be taken that after 2, 3, 4 bites when you pull it keep one keep one needle holder here to support it otherwise it can cut through because extra corporeal knot has a problem that when you are pulling it 
it, it, it will tearing it. So, very gently you have to pull it and one instrument and then this is the past pointing with the Clark knot pusher, he is using all the closure with the Clark knot pusher. So, this is closed and after that again the plutonium will be closed <coughs> continuously. So, this way you can take a multiple bytes and you can close the plutonium. And again it is taken and now pull it out here the instrument was kept in between and then this is the pass pointing. So, anterior peritoneum is slowly closed you have to take care with the extra corporeal that suture should not get entangled which we are seeing here little bit trapped because it is 90 centimeter suture. then you will pull it like this. So, entire peritoneum is closed, so that any part of the mesh is not visible, mesh is completely hidden inside the peritoneum, it is not visible and then slowly pull it out. So, entire peritoneum of the anterior cul sac is closed. Now, what you do this is a long limb. Now, this is just like this is a long limb. And now, what you do you fold it back and the tip of the long limb you fix with the uterocycle ligament at the level where uterocycle ligament is inserting the cervix. So, this is folded mesh, this is folded mesh can you can you see that this is folded mesh and now you will fix it with the uterocycle ligament and a small portion of the flap of the mesh will protrude into the posterior forming. So, that once fibrosis will develop it will no more allow the rectum to yes prolap it cannot go because once the mesh is getting fibrosis with the posterior vaginal fascia it becomes so tough and because it is a polypropylene that now it no more descend. So, basically histocyl, cystocyl and rectocyl all can be yes you can use separate also. You can use separate also, but do you know what is the advantage of folding that this loop you will fix with the sacral permanently. Yes, but you have to use two. Do you know why? The mesh which is encircled anteriorly that can cure cystocele, but it can never cure the yes, it can never cure the rectocele, but the mesh which you are folding back that will cure the rectocele. Anterior mesh cannot cure the any rectocele. So, that is why it is encircled and then you will push it in and then take one bite with the uterocycle ligament here. This is a left side of uterocycle ligament and another bite with the right side of uterocycle ligament. And then you will do the past pointing and here it is fixed. This is one bite this side and another bite that side. This is a very tight and you can close it and uh, this will take care of the posterior fornix and it is in between the uterocycle ligament. So, there is no chance of any problem with the ureter, no chance of any bleeding, no coming the uterine artery because it is posterior cul sac which is very safe area and then one bite is taken this side, another bite is taken that side and that is all. And now this is a loop, can you see that? this is a loop right now this loop is not fixed with the sacral permanent that will be the last step, but what is the step now close all the peritoneum of the posterior cul de sac just like how you have closed the anterior cul de sac you will keep on closing the posterior cul de sac here this is a uterocycle ligament which is taken and then you will close it. So, basically two meshes are sutured together here so that it should not make a loop it should not just like it should not make a loop on which there will be some herniation and now the peritoneum will be closed. Why to close the peritoneum? 
because this patient wants baby and if the ovary or tube will go in between the mesh or it will enter into the peritoneum there may be adhesion. So, this is the closure of the peritoneum just like how you have closed the peritoneum of the anterior cul sac the peritoneum of the posterior cul sac is also approximated taking care that it should not prick the tube or the ovary and entire peritoneum will be closed either side slowly either with the extracorporeal or intracorporeal it is your choice. Rectum is not touched at all in this surgery because rectocil does not have any problem with the rectum, cystocil does not have any problem with the bladder. So, rectum is not touched, bladder is only separated, bladder is also not taken in the bite, only the mesh is used and this is a just like a tension free repair. So, mesh also get fibrosis and only thing what is taken in the main, main strength is taken by the uterosacral ligament. And now, this is again the posterior peritoneum. See, the advantage of extracorporeal knot is that even in that much difficult area, if you are taking a bite, it will not allow the um, peritoneum to escape because in intracorporeal, sometime you do not have that much space here in the deep pelvis to make a C and reverse C and then tie the knot. But extracorporeal knot pusher itself will bring you wherever you want to go. That is true that is true the stitch wasting is one of the big problem. Pardon? Ureter. Ureter is where? 2.5 centimeter lateral to uterosacral ligament. You, you do not go there also. You did not take the bite. You are taking a bite in between uterosacral ligament. So, there is no any chance of ureter coming in the way. And, uh, it is closed. So, this is uh, completely closed. This is the vicryl you have to you, you can use the simple uh, ethy bond also, but vicryl is why peritoneum because peritoneum if it is absorbed it is better, but here you will not take by vicryl here you will take ethy bond because this will be permanent suture. What is this sacral fermentary and here the bite is taken over the anterior longitudinal ligament. Can you see that? This is white colored ethy bond, this side is getting colored, but this is and now what is this? This is a loop like this is a loop and then you pass the needle through this loop, take a bite over the sacral fermentary, pass the needle through the loop and then tie the extracorporeal knot and that is at that time when you are doing it your assistant will keep the uterus pushed up. Yes and then you tie the knot and this is done then and there prolapse is repaired. Now, uterus has no chance to go down because a new mooring is formed that is why we say this is boat in dock analogy. So, now boat is supported by a new mooring and it cannot prolapse and it is done you can see so tight here and uterus is now it is so nearer to the sacral fermentary, it is not willing to go and it is done. After that what you do? The tension will be there, tension will be there because, but this tension is taken by the uterosacral ligament and this taken is taken, taken by the cervix because it is encircling the cervix. So, it cannot break is not it? Just like if someone will pull my tie there will be tension and I have to go where, wherever he wants because I cannot escape. So, you are encircling the cervix. So, once you pull uterus has to be pulled and that is why the tension is there and that is why then and there surgery it is it is done and but remember once the fibrosis develops slowly slowly then it will be multiple point terms. And now, this is tube this is ovary this is sigmoid colon and rectum now you should close the peritoneum here also. So, that the mesh will completely hide. And this is the last step of the surgery, where this is closure of the peritoneum. So, that peritoneum with this is just like hysterosyl, how we cover it by dandy jamming knot, continuous suturing or ever termination, same way you will do it. And this is the end of the surgery. So, any question?
Any doubt? The, 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 I'm not too clear on the, when you're closing the peritoneum posteriorly at the level of the, the cervical region posteriorly. Means posterior cul de sac? Yes, posterior cul de sac. Okay, I will. So I thought it's the same when you open it initially, I thought it's the same peritoneum you open up to the level of the sacral, uh, and, uh, the anterior, the sacral hormone chain. Is it the same? No. It is a different. I will show you. See, I will show you where it is open. I will show you the dissection again. See here. If you see here, what is this? Posterior cul de sac. Now, what is this? Uterosacral. And here will be ureter. And what is this here? Uterus. Okay. So, just pull the peritoneum, this is posterior cul de sac. Can you see that? What is this? This is your anterior window, which is coming through the broad ligament. You got my point? And the mesh will go, Y limb will go from here, and long limb will be folded back and it will be put in there. So, that is why. If we take the, uh, both the limbs of the mesh, it is not going to obstruct the ureter. The ureter is just. <coughs> no, that is why you, once you have separated the, once you have separated the bladder, and once you have separated the bladder and opened the peritoneum, ureter goes lateral, and you have to make it sure that you should not. That's why you are approximately 1.5 centimeter. Ureter will be here, and you can you you should never obstruct the ureter. How can you do that? Isn't it? Otherwise, it will strangulate. So that's why, and this is posterior cul de sac. So you, can you see that? And why it is done? Because a portion of the mesh will be pushed into preperitoneal area a portion of the mesh will be pushed in between peritoneum and vagina. So, that once you will close the peritoneum what will happen? Just like hernia it will make a fibrosis is not it? So, this is the posterior peritoneum here this is the posterior peritoneum which is open. So, you have no more uh, peritoneal reflection between the uh, posterior Of course, it is very loose it is very loose if you pull it you can stretch it like the peritoneum anywhere it is very loose peritoneum do you know when you do the colpotomy, then you are pushing a sponge into the vagina. So, that is why it is tight, but if you will not do colpotomy and you will pull the peritoneum, you can stretch it like you, you are seeing, I am showing you the back. This is a window which is created posterior on the anterior side. This is on the left side anterior peritoneum, right side that is already paracervical, you have to make it. And once the window is created, then you cut it by the scissors. Ureter has to be uh, seen that it should not come medial to that and see here this is the posterior cul de sac and if with a grasper you will stretch the peritoneum automatically it comes out see here here you just hold and pull did you see that it is getting pulled and then it is cut starting from peritoneum of the uterosacral ligament and if you and gas itself will help you can you see the stretch of the peritoneum peritoneum is stretched and it is opened. So, either side of the peritoneum has to be opened. And there is no risk of uh, tension on the uh, vaginal branch of the no, it No, that is not there and moreover vaginal part of the uterine arteries, the vaginal arteries are coming from lateral. You are in between the uterosacral ligament. So, that will not compromise any of the vessel and this is closure of the peritoneum after putting the mesh and finally, mesh is sutured and then close the peritoneum. So, basically this is also a peritoneal surgery where you have to open the peritoneum and close the peritoneum taking care of the ureter of course, and other care should be taken that the mesh should not be exposed to the bowel. So, that is why this is a closure of the peritoneum after fixing the mesh with the sacral permanent. So, any other doubt? Now, I will show you the one more video. This is how you can prepare the sacrocolpopexy, but what to do if there is a valve prolapse is not it. Now, the valve prolapse is repaired different way. In valve prolapse what is the problem? Problem is that uterosacral ligament is cut, there is no uterosacral to fix with the mesh 
there is no cervix to encircle. So, what you do in this there is a different way these are the four ports technique same way how you do the any other procedure and here is this is the sigmoid colon and here this is what sacral permanency and you will just pull the peritoneum and start cutting the peritoneum of the sacral permanency and same way you will start going towards the uterosacral ligament lifting the peritoneum is important. So, lift the peritoneum and cut the peritoneum from the right side of rectum. and reaching up to the uterosacral ligament. Now, the problem is once you reach at the level of the vault, then everything is plastered. You do not have any idea where is the anterior vagina, where is the posterior vagina, where is the bladder. So, what you do? You use a ribbon detractor. It is just like an instrument which is used by the tongue depressor by physician and you will and vault is prolapsed. So, you will take a ribbon detractor and push it into the vagina. Here this is a ribbon detractor and you push it into the vagina. Now, anterior to this what is this bladder and anterior vagina and posterior to this is the posterior vaginal wall. So, you will push it in and after that you will start cutting the post around the rectum this is around the rectum. You have to mobilize little bit the rectum also in this and you have to go to the para rectal space do you know why here this is rectum and ribbon detractor is pushing the vagina up and this is the pararectal space. Why pararectal space is required? Because here you cannot take a bite on the uterosacral. So, what you have to do? You have to take a bite on the levator ani. Tell me one thing that whenever you do the perineography, what is the most important step? Approximation of levator ani because this is the levator ani muscle which keep the vagina separate from rectum or anus. So, if you not repair it there is no any benefit. So, exactly same way here suppose this is the rectum and I have to put a mess there is no uterus which I can encircle there is no uterosacral which I can take then you put a mess and one corner of the mess fix with the one levator and eye and other corner of the mess will you fix with the other levator and eye. So, what happens? there will be a tough sheath developed anterior to the rectum which will join both the levator and eye. And then later once the fibrosis develop it will bring a very good separation from the vagina to the rectum. So, that is why this dissection is required that is called as pararectal dissection and you will go either side of the rectum to find out the levator and eye muscle. Sometime if you have a problem then you can ask your assistant to put a finger into the anus or he can push the levator ani vaginally. So, that you can feel it this is ribbon detractor this is ribbon detractor. So, this is right side of levator ani is fixed now the left side of levator ani is identified and that also you have to do blunt mostly the blunt dissection and those soft tissue below that there will be a fat pad and below that the Levator and I fascia will be visible. So, this is important because if you will not take a bite on the levator and I, then there will be no good anatomical and physiological repair of the uh, vagina. So, that is why it is pararectal space dissection is required. Where the uterus is present, you do not need it, but once the uterus is not present, it is needed. So, this is a fat pad you can see, and just below here you have the levator and I muscle. So, obturator is too lateral you are just on the side of the rectum yes on the anus you can say because you are going deep after mobilizing the anterior peritoneum of the rectum. If there is any bleeding you should just use the bipolar not any other instrument in those situation and now it is done after that what you do take a piece of mess here two messes are used separately 
but you can use single mesh also and you can fold it. This is a bite on the levator ni on the right side, a deep bite is taken on the levator ni right side and one of the corner of the mesh which is the fix with the this right sided of the levator ni and this mesh is sutured and then the another corner of the mesh will be taken by the other levator ni. It is a very strong muscle which you can feel very nicely and sometime assistant also can guide you and this is a bite taken on the other side of the levator ni and this is done and after that the middle of the mesh will be sutured with the vaginal fascia and what is below below is the rectum below is the rectum and then what you do side of the mesh you suture with the uterosacral ligament side of the mesh. So, total 5 sutures has taken here the side of the mesh you will fix it either side this is one side and then other side. and it is fixed. So, this mesh is called as posterior prosthesis and posterior prosthesis will repair what? Rectocele. So, it is done and now what you do push the river retractor and then this is the posterior prosthesis, this is the vagina 9 centimeter of the vagina should go inside because normal length is that much and then you separate the bladder here that is the anterior prosthesis you have to put separate the bladder already the bladder is above this is the bladder with the foliage catheter, but little bit bladder which is which is herniating together with the vagina in the wall prolapse that you have to separate here little bit harmonic is used in the book it is written that when you are separating the bladder from the vagina you should better perforate the bladder rather than perforate the vagina means idea is that bladder if it is suppose little bit injured you can repair it suture it, but if the vagina you will cut it then there is chances of infection of the mesh. So, that is why better not open the vagina and separate the bladder up and once the bladder is separated it depends how much you will separate depends upon the extent of the cystocele and it is separated. After that if the same mesh if it is big you fold it or if you are using the separate mesh put one mesh anterior to the vagina here. So, one mesh is posterior to the vagina other mesh is anterior this is bladder, bladder is separated and then you take a bite on the vaginal fascia and suture a mesh here and this is another mesh which will be sutured. And after that what you do sandwich the vagina in between the two layer. So, we will see here how to do this is anterior mesh, this is a vaginal fascia and this is posterior mesh and you take a bite and you sandwich the vagina in between the two layer of the mesh. So, that will completely cure the and ribbon retractor is there. So, that ribbon retractor will not allow you to develop the vaginoclysis it will make the space and it will keep the wide opening there. So, this is anterior vagina, this is vaginal fascia and this is the posterior vagina. So, 3 3 bite you will take either side and this is the entire vagina is sandwiched in between the two layer of the mesh. So, this bite is taken on the left side and then you will take the bite on the right side. and ribbon retractor is present which will not allow the suture to enter into the vagina and this is posterior mesh vagina and anterior mesh and this is on the right side. So, bladder is above and it is last suture with the vagina it is done. After that what you do take a just a one bite over the sacral permanente this is sacral permanente. sacral permanente and then pass it through the net of the mesh. This is posterior mesh and this is anterior mesh. Pass it through the net of the mesh and tie the extracorporeal 
a square knot because it is more more uh, secured and it is more tight and it is done. If you have excess of the mesh, you have to trim it, and if you have excess of the suture, you have to trim it. So this is the excess of the mesh is trimmed out because every patient varies according to the size and according to the extent of the prolapse. And now you close the peritoneum here, and entire peritoneum will be closed. So you take a bite and close the peritoneum, and this is the final part of the surgery. Yes, yes, that also you can do because going deep down there is little bit difficult, but that you can do. But only thing will be there that posterior vagina will be loose. You got my point? But if you will put a mesh so deep fixing with the levator and I either side, then it will be a very tight and that will give you a good uh, space, good uh, boundary in between the vagina and the rectum, is not it? Not only that, many a time the very easy step is you do supra cervical hysterectomy and then I take a bite with the cervix itself and you fix with the mesh. But that can only be done if the patient wants to sacrifice the uterus. If patient wants to keep the uterus, then you will do dual processes sacral colpopexy, which we have seen before. And if uterus is already removed, then you have to do the anterior and posterior dissection, but that also will work. If you will not dissect it so much deep, if you will just separate the bladder, but the quality of the life will not be that much good. Do you know why? Because if you are putting a ribbon detractor and sandwiching it nicely, then a tubular shape of the vagina is maintained and the anterior and posterior repair gives you the better quality of life of the patient. Is it okay? So, this way you can perform these both the procedures. So, now we will discuss the other topic.